Hey everyone, Video Game Lover here, and since I already did a review for Mortal Kombat the movie, I might as well do my review for Godzilla vs. Kong, since I start watched that like almost a month ago. So, Godzilla vs. Kong, I was so hyped up for this film since 2019 when it was announced. Um, it was supposed to came out, obviously, March of 2020, but unfortunately due to COVID, it was delayed all the way to March of 2021. So it finally came out on HBO Max, that's where I saw it, and I really, really enjoyed Godzilla vs. Kong. It was a very good movie. There was a lot of good fights between Godzilla vs. Kong, and it's not like they only fight one time and that's it. No, they fight a couple of times, and the best part of all is that they fight in the daytime. They only fight in the nighttime just one time. And that's only just the first phase of the final battle between Godzilla Kong and the mysterious monster, which I'll mention. So, Godzilla vs. Kong, man, um, the special effects were very good. In fact, I actually think it might have been some of the best from the MonsterVerse series. I actually think that's some of the best. Kong looked very good. Godzilla looked very good. Um... The destruction of the environment looked really good, especially um, especially when Kong travels to Hollow Earth, which is like the bottom part of our planet. That Kong travels and he gets his axe and that's how he fights Godzilla for real. At least he has a chance against Godzilla because we all know that King Kong realistically doesn't stand a chance against Godzilla. <laughs> Let's be perfectly honest here though. So... But yeah, it was a really uh, good movie. Uh, the story was alright. I mean, the human characters were kind of there. Um, I'm not going to get into kind of spoilers, but it's not really spoilers because the movie came out a month ago. So, about the human characters. I had no idea that the guy that piloted Mechagodzilla was Dr. Sirizawa's son. Yeah, Dr. Sirizawa's son, you know, Sirizawa, who was in the first two Godzilla films. That was his son, and for some reason, he was working with Monarch. Yeah, for some reason, he was working with those people working on Mechagodzilla, and he was piloting in it. No explanation. He's just, eh, working for them. Guess he needed money. I guess. I mean, I guess. I guess, he, I guess, I guess COVID was just too much, so he has to uh, work for Monarch. I guess. So, I mean, the image characters, for the most part, were okay. Um, Bernie was a cool character. I thought he was okay. Kyle Chandler wasn't really there, but when he was there, he was all right. And uh, Eleven from Stranger Things. I keep forgetting her character's name. I think it was Madison. Madison, yeah. She was all right. So, I mean, you really didn't come for this movie for the human characters. But you have to understand that the human characters still have to be in it. It can't just be Godzilla vs. Kong for two hours. Because if not, then, hey, we're a bunch of hypocrites because we trashed the Transformers films. So, but I want to talk about Mechagodzilla. What was my thoughts on that version of Mechagodzilla? I wasn't a huge fan of his design. He felt like a little scrawny, but he was badass as hell. And a lot of people don't know about this. That was the first time in 46 years since Terra Mechagodzilla back in 1975 that Mechagodzilla was evil. That was the first time in 46 years he was evil. From the Heisei series from the Millennium series, he was always a good guy. But in this one, he was actually a bad guy, which I thought was refreshing. I think it was time for him to be evil for once. It's been so long, almost a half a century. So, Mega, he borrowed a lot of elements from the past three Mega Godzillas. One, he was just like the show of Mega Godzilla because of how psychotic he was, just how strong he was. The Heisei Mega Godzilla because they used the. the decapitated head of one of the Ghidor of King Ghidorah's heads, Kevin, and that's how they use it to control Mechagodzilla. And so it's kind of based on the Heisei Mecha Mechagodzilla because in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, they use Mecha King Ghidorah's armor to make Mechagodzilla. And the Millennium Godzilla, mainly because of how he goes out of control, just like Kiru in Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. So he... That Mechagodzilla borrowed elements from all the three past Mechagodzillas, which I thought was really interesting. But the fight between him and Godzilla and Kong, that they had a tag team and battle Mechagodzilla, that was awesome. Like, the last 30 minutes of that movie was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. So, 
I really enjoyed this film a lot. I thought it was a great movie. And in my personal opinion, I think it's the best one for the MonsterVerse uh, series. And I'm going to be honest, I feel like this movie really saved the MonsterVerse series. Uh, the MonsterVerse. Because a lot of people may not remember this, but Godzilla King of the Monsters actually did not did very well in the box office. It didn't do did as well as... Godzilla 2014, and I think a lot of it was because of it came out in such a tight schedule. You know, you had John Wick 3, you had Aladdin coming out. It it got lucky that X Men that X Men movie bombed miserably. So it wasn't for that. It might have done way worse, but um, it definitely helped it out a lot. And I heard a rumor going around that they were going to do a crossover of Pacific Rim because I heard that the reason they did the whole Hollow Earth thing was so that way they could try to cross over Pacific Rim. I'm not sure that's true or not because Pacific Rim is kind of still a little iffy after Pacific Rim Uprising that came out three years ago, so... We'll have to see. But anyways, guys, that's it for our review of Godzilla vs. Kong. It was a really good movie. And I hope you guys enjoyed that review. See you guys later. Peace.